First, it has to be remembered that art had no name for a long time. When looking back through the lens of 21st century eyes, we can only draw our conclusions from empirical evidence, from what we know, and yes, sometimes well-informed guesses when looking at artefacts of differing cultures from the very distant past. A lot has yet to possibly be discovered. A lot has, by way of recent Western history, already been discovered, ignored or sidelined, and is only now being recognised for its full worth. We do know, though, for example, the cave paintings from Lascaux to Altamira and even South Africa's recent discoveries all have one thing in common, a human need to make that mark that mark intended to communicate something, and that mark to last, a permanence of sorts. That mark making in essence is no different than any mark making from any period in time. A straight line is a straight line, a circle a circle, the type of mark, either with some intended meaning or how it is experienced, may be different in a different set of circumstances. An artist can improve with their own understanding of their work, but there can be rare moments when art or a specific artist realises a leap in cognition. Art as an entity though is not a thing that improves, it only changes. All this looked at through our relatively recent knowledge, it is nearly impossible to recreate or understand fully the ideas or contexts that were around during any individual artefacts making. Art Made Clear has approached this conundrum by looking at the timeline of this history, showing how aspects of culture were either relished, ignored or looked at through a certain lens. In recognising how the art of some cultures became more apparent in the light of the recent past. For reference to, and when, and how, Art Made Clear will bring art of global cultures into the series, not as they occurred historically, but when they were or began to be noticed this to show how art has been filtered and constituted in the past. The Western canon of culture is debated as a specific viewpoint of certain bias, typically of high culture associated with, but not exclusively, the West, canon being the Greek meaning for standard. Global culture as distinct from the Western canon is equally deep and complex and as this series is intended to show how this phenomenon emerged, complementary episodes are intended to look further into the art of specific indigenous peoples of the Americas along with Australasia, Africa's vast continent and smaller island cultures. To realise how art came to be in this place, from earliest known records to the global art now emerging in the international art market of the contemporary art scene, we will start with three areas to have archaeological significance globally. Mesoamerica, Mesopotamia and China. They are seen as the three areas where thousands of years ago independent writing systems emerged. Mesopotamia and China, as part of the same landmass, saw people traversing from very early on. Mesoamerica appearing in the Western documented timeline as a separate entity looked at from a different viewpoint on a different continent. These three specific areas helped give insight into how humans moved, settled and communicated, in how the written word and language evolved. Art was to become synonymous with the Western culture of the recent past, 
through the classics of Greco-Roman heritage and subsequent archaeological interest in Mesopotamia. The term Old World and New World being part of this defining. The Old World being the combination of Africa, Europe and Asia, regarded collectively as that part of the world known to the inhabitants before there was Western contact with the Americas. And the New World being the Americas or undiscovered lands. Eurasia being Europe and Asia, and Afro-Eurasia the combined landmass. All three areas from the archaeological view add knowledge to and help define our global beginnings. But we will begin with the Mesopotamian viewpoint. You will see how this focus placed other cultures on other continents including the island worlds of Japan, Indonesia, the Philippines, Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia's Pacific Islands and Australasia in a different context. With a seafaring Renaissance Europe, warring at home and overseas, competitively involved with itself, it seemingly the centre of the universe for trade in exotic goods and ideas and thinking, especially in art, saw a special attention paid to it with the emergence of Italian and Dutch art, for example, the Low Countries before Reformation and War, post-medieval fiefdoms, Europe saw a dividing up into republics and royal nation-states, which during the Renaissance was bordering on obsession regarding its art. Discovery into the new world was fueled with a lust for new trade, coupled with a sense of entitlement and a large amount of religious fervour already in place, all held in this centre of the universe mindset. This Western view shaped how culture and art was responded to and looked at, often termed folk art or traditional, as opposed to the high art, fine art coming out of the nations of Europe or even contemporary art today. These new or discovered cultures later became of interest in a global sense only as the spotlight from that Western viewpoint shifted. Interest in art was to follow. Interest in truly global art has gradually opened up and with energy and enthusiasm a cultural mix of traditional and contemporary, all now potentially seen as art of worth and without being cynical, especially in the eyes of the international art market, a term for the global market that keeps art buoyant and exclusive in terms of price. <laughs> 